Good afternoon, Pranandar. Croisio, welcome to this evening's Royal College of Nursing Wales live Q&A with the Health Minister for Wales, Elaine Morgan. I'm really pleased to see so many of you coming onto the call. As with these things, technology can sometimes be challenging and we have had a few issues with getting the Minister into today's meeting. But we're continuing to work on that. And before we go to our live Q&A, we're going to do some introductions, hear a little bit of background from our trade union committee member and chair of the board, as well as have a short presentation so that you've got the main points of this additional offer for the 22-23 NHS Pay Award at your fingertips whilst you're questioning the minister. Because this is a Teams meeting, the way you can put your questions is by going to the top of your of your um, Teams screen and clicking on the show Q&A. Once you're in there, just type your question and push it through in, by pressing the enter button and we can see them. We will then publish questions so that everyone can see them and we'll go through them then with the Minister when we get into the live Q&A session. So let me introduce to you some of the people who will be speaking. Firstly, I'm going to introduce Jackie Davis. Jackie is a registered nurse. Her clinical background is mental health and forensic psychiatry. She is our trade union committee member for Wales on the RCN UK trade union committee. And she's also the chair of the RCN Wales board. Jackie is currently the independent member of the board of Swansea Bay University Health Board and it's a public appointment that she's held since 2017. So we look forward to speaking to Jackie very shortly. Alongside Jackie, I have my colleague Nikki Hughes, who's the Associate Director for Employment Relations at the Royal College of Nursing in Wales. Nikki's got a vast experience of trade unions, negotiating and discussions in terms of NHS terms and conditions. And Nikki currently chairs the staff side group of the Welsh Partnership Forum, which she's been doing for the last couple of years. Nikki comes to the RCN following a wealth of experience as a senior nurse and left her last post in the NHS at Cardiff and the Vale um, when she joined us a few years ago. And Nikki will be taking us through some of the details of the offer so that you've got them at your fingertips. So I can see your questions are starting to come in please continue to type them and we'll publish and get through as many as we can in this session. We're due to finish at six o'clock. So it's my great pleasure to introduce to you Jackie Davis, who's going to say a few opening remarks and set the scene for us as we start today's webinar. Thank you very much, Jackie. Thank you, Helen, and thank you, this evening and I hope ASEAN Wales members find it very helpful. So just as a way of a brief introduction, obviously last September we received our pay award for 22-23, an award which you said simply wasn't good enough. So in October we balloted you all and all ASEAN Wales members within NHS employers spoke loud and clearly. All bar one employer met the threshold for industrial action, but all our members in every NHS employer in Wales voted overwhelmingly in favour of industrial action. So obviously we started that journey then in December and we had two days of strike. And like many of you, it was the first time in my career, and I've been a nurse a long time, that I've ever taken industrial action like many of you. I never thought I'd even be voting to take industrial action, but such is our sense of not feeling valued and not being paid fairly for what we do. We now have an additional offer from Welsh Government. We were told that this is a full and final offer. So for that reason, and the fact it contained a consolidated percentage, it is you, the ASEAN Wales members, that have to decide whether to accept or reject their offer. We're currently balloting you, and that ballot closes on the 27th of February. 
there are a number of components to it, not just the consolidated percentage and a one-off payment, but some additionality. So I'm going to pass you on to my colleague, Nikki Hughes, who's just going to go through and explain a little bit about what that is. So you are perhaps better informed and then we can put our questions to the minister. Nikki, and thank you. Thank you, Jackie. And if I could have my first slide up, I'd be very grateful. So um, just uh, as, as Jackie has very uh, eloquently said, um, this is an offer on top of the award that was already provided in your September pay, which was £1,400 across all bands with some, some um, help for band uh, six and seven uh, and some of the lower bands. But that's already gone in your pay packet. You've seen that and you've seen the back pay to that. So what this offer is about is an additional 3% pay offer of which one and a half percent is consolidated. So what that means is it will go in your pay packet year on year and will be built on uh, year on year. The other one and a half percent is what we call non-consolidated. So that's a one-off payment that will be liable to tax and insurance. So if we re remember back to the COVID payment, the, consol the non-consolidated element is very much like uh, that COVID payment. So there's one and a half percent that goes into pay packets moving forward, and then there's a one-off payment. Now, um, well, if this is implemented, it will be implemented and backdated to April 2022. And if you remember, you did get back pay for the one one thousand four hundred pounds. So um, there is uh, information on uh, the website which gives you very clear um, figures from Welsh Government around what that means for you as an individual on your pay band. So it's very worthwhile having a look at that to see what the monetary element of this actually means to you as an individual. If I could have the next slide, please. So um, alongside that, as a trade union group, um, uh, we met with Welsh Government and um, had long negotiations about what additional things we could add to the pay offer to um, look at some non-pay issues. Although I say non-pay, some of it will help um, with with your pay moving forward and I'll try and explain them but again there's very much a lot of detail in the consultation document in on the website so you know if you want the finer detail please go onto the website and have a look at the, that but I can give you the overview this evening. So the own social hours allowance so you may remember that um, if you go on to uh, sickness for the first six weeks of your sickness, you won't receive any enhanced payments if you regularly work um, over different shift patterns and on the weekend, you, you don't receive your enhancements for that period of time. And then after that six weeks, those enhancements kick back in. So what we've negotiated with Welsh Government is that that now comes down from six to three weeks. So it's now half, so you would only need to be off sick for three weeks uh, if you were on long term sick and you would get your enhancements. Obviously, we want people to get back to work as quick as possible, but it's so that you don't have any detriment if you're off for that period of time. With the view that hopefully over the coming year, we can discuss about how we can get rid of that completely. We talk very much about career progression, and this is very much to look at nurses first, in terms of, we know that we've got a lot of members who are at the top of band five who can't then move up to a band six for an array of different reasons. And what we're looking at is doing a piece of work very quickly to look at how we can maybe get people to go from a band five directly to a band six, similar to our RCM, our midwife colleagues, and similar to our physio colleagues. Welsh Government agreed to sign up to the pay restoration, the principle of pay restoration. So if you remember, this is about 10 years or more. And we've said in the Welsh Government have said in their announcement back to 2008, over those period of times, nurses have had their pay offer or pay awards, either, either nothing at all frozen 
or they've had below inflation. So we recognise that we're about 20% down to what we should have been if we'd have followed inflation. So there is um, a, a key principle here that Welsh Government are really going to look at how we can look at getting pay restoration over time. We're looking at working hours. So again, there's going to be a working group to look at uh, working hours with the view that um, that we will reduce working hours to 36 hours a week. And that um, for nurses would be a very positive uh, element, particularly if you have to do a makeup shift, but you would still have full time pay for those 36 hours. And so your hourly rate will go up. So we're we're committed to looking at with Welsh Government what that would look like and scoping that out. The, again, the reduction in use of agency, we've heard huge um, spend on agency and how we can get nurses back into the NHS workforce that, so that they feel valued, so that we can make sure that safe patient care is really a pinnacle of what we do. So it's about the use of uh, reduction of agency and the use of that money to plough back into the NHS. We're looking at some things which will help with some of those vacancy factors, and that's around a retention strategy, a flexible working policy, and a retire and return policy, which will all help that. And then there's some health and wellbeing elements that hopefully, again, will look at how you're supported in the work environment, both when you're in work and then supporting you back into the work environment should you uh, feel unwell and, and go on to sick leave. Next slide, please. So, as Jackie said, we're now out to vote. The vote opened on the 10th of February and it closes at nine o'clock on Monday the 27th. So you've only got a few more days now to vote. And what we can, um, what we can um, ask you to do is very much go out and talk to your colleagues, particularly after, after coming tonight, and talk to them about making sure they get their vote in. Excuse me. That vote is by email or going on to my RCN. You can do that. I'll hand over to Helen. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. Nikki's obviously got a nasty little cough there. Nikki, I do hope you're all right and you've got a glass of water. Yeah, so the vote is open. Uh, it will close next Monday. Please make sure that you vote and that you encourage your colleagues to do the same. And um, I'm going to bring in now the um, Welsh Government Minister for Health and Social Services, who I'm delighted has been able to join us this evening. Uh, I know that Elenid wants to say a few words, but then she is also open to taking questions from the audience. So as I said to you earlier, you can go to the Q&A tab on your Teams bar at the top, click on that, type your question in, press the return button, uh, and we will get through as many of those as we possibly can. And um, we've managed to get the technology working as well now, Minister, which is always grateful to, to have happen so we can both see and hear you. So um, thank you for joining us this evening. Diolch and Well, Diolch and thank you so much. And thanks for giving me this opportunity to speak to you. Um, look, this is an opportunity, first of all, for me to say thanks, because I know that you've all been working incredibly hard, uh, not just now, but for uh, for a number of years, uh, for years on end, in fact. And we know that the pressure you've been under, particularly during the pandemic and since the pandemic, has been 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 incredible. So, uh, you know, I want to put on record my thanks to you, but but also um, just to say that uh, obviously we're in a difficult situation at the moment, and we're obviously in a position now where um, we have uh, been very keen to see what we can do to work with you to avoid uh, further industrial action. Um, we, we are more than aware of the pressures that you're under. Um, you know, I represent a Welsh Labour government. We are as committed to you as you are to the NHS. There are obviously pressures like we've never seen before. We've got an ageing population. We've got, uh, you know, the, the hangover from the pandemic. So there's there's lots and lots of pressures on the system. And we're aware that you're on the front line during a cost of living crisis. So we understand 
uh, that that the money that you've had in your pockets has been effectively eroded as a result of inflation, like like so many others. And so we recognise the strength of feeling that uh, there is in in your ranks. Um, and I've got to tell you that you've got some pretty tough negotiators uh, in terms of the people who represent you um, at the Welsh Government table. We actually try and work very closely with trade unions in Wales. We make sure we have an open dialogue. I, th I hope you'll agree that it's very different from the relationship they have with the Westminster Government. But the key thing that I wanted to get across to you today really is that, that we are only able to go so far as a result of the money that we get from the UK government. So if they give more money to their nurses in England, then we can obviously reflect that in Wales. But the money we get um, from the UK government is proportionate to what they get in England. Uh, and so there is a limit to how far we can go. And if we need, if we are to put more money on the table, then we effectively got to find that from elsewhere. Uh, but we've tried to do that. We've been a right round government. We've tried to slow down spending in some other areas of government uh, to try and put a, a deal on the table. Um, and what we are keen to do is to make sure that we go beyond Sorry, uh, the, uh, yeah, I'm back. Sorry, uh, beyond the thousand four hundred, that was the recommendation of the independent pay, uh, pay review body, and we have managed to find a, a, an extra one point five percent this financial year. Now we heard very loudly and clearly you say, and your representatives say, listen, that's not good enough. You've got to get, make this consolidated. Now we we think we've gone as far as we can with with the consolidated pay and I'll tell you why it's because um, we're in a situation where this year we've been able to slow down uh, the funding next year the the budgets are, are really very very tight and what that means is that we've gone into our reserves this year so um, you know when, when you're in a government you've got to keep a little bit of money behind just in case there's an earthquake or a massive blizzard or any of these other things. And we have a reserve. Now we've eaten into our reserve this year in order to try and give you that extra one and a half percent for this year. But it obviously means that it's not there for next year. So next year's money we're going to have to find from savings. You've told us very clearly, you know, that that, you know, the agency nurses is an issue. And so we think if we work together with you, we can bring down the amount we spend on agency workers um, and, and effectively redirect some of that money into, into pay packages. So um, that's a risk because obviously if we fail to do that, you know, we're making a commitment to you here and we will honour that commitment. But if we fail to find that those that the savings from agency, I'm going to have to find some cuts from elsewhere in the health budget, which is obviously quite difficult at the moment. The, the other thing I really wanted to emphasise is that the money for this year, and it's not insignificant, it's, it's, it's actually quite a lot of money, it's about £120 million this year for NHS workers, extra money that you will have in your pockets before the end of April, that goes at the end of April, that no longer exists. So we have this system, so it's not like, you know, the way you organise your budgets, you know, in your own home, you know, it just rolls on. In April, our money stops and the, and the whole system starts again. And if we haven't spent the money, it goes back. So if the money's not picked up before April, it goes, it disappears. So we can't honour what we've put on the table for you now. So that is really, really difficult, which is why there is this kind of timing issue that we're keen to see. And obviously, I'm keen for you to, to take that opportunity to get that money in your pocket, because the real problem, and I understand you'd, li you'd like more than we're offering, but, um, you know, I'm keen to emphasise really that, that actually this is as far as we can go, and that, that if you don't pick it up before April, then, then that is effectively lost and that is a problem for us. And just the other one point I'd like to say, and that is in relation to industrial action. Um, I understand the strength of feeling. Um, I understand why people are upset. But in terms of industrial action, um, we've got a situation where 
I've been around the whole of government and they have said, OK, we are going to help you to fund this pay offer. But it was kind of conditional on you've got to stop the strikes, though, because otherwise, what are we getting in return for all of this significant money that we're putting on the table? And that's going to cause a problem for other areas of government if we can't deliver on that. So, so, you know, I'm speaking on behalf of health in Welsh government, but they're also pressing me and saying, listen, you know, you're asking us to slow down spending in other areas. If you can't deliver um, on stopping the strikes, then that's no good to us and, and we'll have our money back, please. So so it's very, very difficult for us. Um, I, I, I just hope, you know, what I want to do today is just try and be straight with you. That's my style is just to try and be straight. Uh, and I'm more than happy to answer some questions. Diogo Valrian, thank you very much for some opening comments. It's very, very helpful. Um, there is some news breaking as we're actually on this webinar, which uh, I don't expect you to answer straight away, Minister, but I did think it was uh, important that I share this, and that is that the um, government, the Westminster government and the Royal College of Nursing have agreed to enter into a process of intensive talks and strikes will be paused in England during these talks. Um, the government and the Royal College of Nursing have agreed to enter into a process of intensive discussions. Both sides are committed to finding a fair and reasonable settlement that recognises the vital role that nurses and nursing play in the National Health Service and the wider economic pressures facing the UK and the Prime Minister's priority halve inflation. The talks will focus on pay, terms and conditions and productivity enhancing reforms. The Health Secretary will meet with the RCN on Wednesday to begin the talks. During this time, the RCN will pause strike action. So I thought it was important to, to read that out for both yourself, Minister, and also for people on the, on the call. Uh, I know we're going to put the link to that release into the chat too. Um, there are a number of questions in the box about what might happen in Wales if something happens in um, Westminster, which I'll come back to, Minister, just to give you a little opportunity to um, to let that sink in. And I hope that um, you agree that it's been helpful for me to share that as it's literally breaking as as um, as we've come into the webinar this afternoon. Um, but I'll start with some other questions. So the first one that came in, the very first question that we took, um, it was if you had an open checkbook, do you think we, and by we, I take that as nurses and nursing, deserve the 19% pay award? So I thought that's a nice one to start us off with, Minister. Um, and our members do like to ask you difficult questions, but I know that you'll uh, you'll do your best to answer as many as you can for us this evening. Yeah, listen, I, I, I think um, if you look at how much pay is eroded, over the past 10, 15 years in real terms, then obviously um, I think there's a long way to go, which is why we have said that we believe in uh, pay restoration. So getting back to a point where you were effectively in terms of real term pay by 2008. So I think that's more or less in that ballpark. Now, the problem I have is that I don't have uh, an open checkbook. Um, but, you know, one thing I would like to share with you and and, you know, you will understand this probably more than than anyone that that actually I'm very keen also to make sure we pay care workers because actually a lot of the problems that we're facing in hospitals at the moment are relating to delayed transfers of care and they're on the real living wage. So I think it's really important to to focus on them as well as nurses. So. Um, just in terms of the principle, I would love to get up to that kind of level. You know, obviously we have to work in the real world and, and that's why we're trying to go as far as we can here. Um, there are probably some implications to what you've just uh, talked about, but uh, perhaps we can get onto those a bit later. Thank you. 
Um, the next question um, asks about additional money and the questioner is asking at the start of these uh, discussions, the start of the dispute for this, this pay award, the Welsh Government said that there was no additional money and then they went and found some money which they were able to put onto the table. Why should we believe when you say there is no more money? Scotland have found more money for their staff. Why can't the Welsh Government? And I'll come back to Scotland again in a minute as well, Minister. OK, thanks very much. I'm, I'm going to do something really weird, if you don't mind, very quickly. I'm going to introduce you to my mother. <laughs> so just so you understand if I'm a little bit distracted. So if you don't mind, I'll just be... I'll, I'll be half an hour. Okay, oh, that's lovely. Uh, aren't we sorry. lucky to meet your mum? I'm so sorry about that. Um, no, don't be sorry. It's lovely. <laughs> it's a privilege to meet your mum. I'm so sorry. She's got a big belly. <laughs> so, um, yes. So, first of all, in terms of additional pay, I think it's really important that I'm clear that there is no additional money. So, you know, when I said there is no more additional money, we over Christmas, we we spent a lot of time actually asking everyone around government can you put some more money on the table can you can you basically slow down your expenditure and we asked the finance minister can you go into your reserves so that's where the money's come from for us to put this money on the table for this year so it's not additional money we haven't found it it's because we've slowed down and cut things from other areas in order to give it to you guys and we are taking a risk when it comes to reserves. Um, you know, if we have an earthquake next year, it, it would be very difficult because we're using up our reserves to pay you this year. Next year, we are hoping if we can we can address the issue of agency, that will mean that we can get to a place where we can carry this on into the future. So there's no additional money. We haven't found any extra money. We're just reorganising some of the money that already exists. And, and just in terms of Scotland, and I think it probably is, is worth us just reflecting on that a little bit. So in Scotland, one of the things they've done is they, they've actually um, cut a lot of money that's going into health. So they're, you know, they're giving it to nurses, but they're cutting services effectively. Now that's really difficult for us when our waiting lists are longer than other places. So I think that's a real challenge. I know that, you know, about 65% of what we spend in health is directly on, on NHS salaries. So, so that's a real problem for us. And the problem for us, as with you uh, in health, is that actually, you know, we've had to contend with inflation as well. So for example, this year, we've had to spend £207 million extra on energy costs. Um, which we weren't expecting in the NHS, and we only put by 170 million to clear the backlog. So it gives you an idea of, of the kind of inflation that we in the NHS are having to face as well as you trying to deal with that in your homes. So, th so that's the problem. And the other thing is, um, you know, what we could do, and you know, we 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 have thought about it. Is you know. Could we tax people more in Wales? Because that's what they've done in Scotland. The real problem we have in Wales is that we just don't have enough rich people. That's the reality. So the number of people who pay the highest band of tax in Wales is 9,000 people. People. So if you raise 1p for them on their tax, you get to £3 million. If you get to go on the band beneath that, so people who earn over £40,000, only 11% of the Welsh public earn over £40,000. And if you tax them an extra penny in the pound, then you get to £33 million. For us to raise the, your money by one percentage point, we've got to find £55 million a year. So even if we raise taxes on those two richest bits, yeah, we wouldn't get to where we anywhere near, you know, the money that you were talking about, the 19 percent. Obviously, the even the 55 percent is a stretch. And we think at the moment that to raise taxes for anyone 
who's earning less than 40,000, and some of your members will be earning less than 40,000, a lot of your members will be, we, you know that, that you're struggling. And so for us to, to ask others to pay more tax would be really hard at the moment when there's a cost of living crisis. So, so that's why we think we're in a different situation from Scotland. Thank you. There are a few questions uh, about Scotland, which I'll, I'll pull out as well, which um, I haven't quite answered from, from that response. So uh, the first one is, will the Welsh Government work towards pay parity with NHS Scotland? And um, then another question asking um, if Scotland are able to offer band fives, which is generally where staff nurses are, um, 15 per cent over two years, why can't the Welsh Government. So there's a few members still not really sure about why the Welsh Government can't do what Scotland are doing. So I wonder if you would like to comment on either of those questions. You're on mute, Minister. Sorry, there's quite a complicated mechanism in terms of how we get our money in Wales um, and, and it's it's largely based on what they call a Barnett formula. Now, the Barnett formula um, basically says uh, if there are areas of devolved competence, so the NHS, education, if the NHS, the education system in England gets an additional amount, we get a proportionate additional amount. But it's worked out on the basis of, of a formula called the Barnett formula. That Barnett formula means that Scotland gets considerably more than Wales does. Uh, you know, it's a it, it's an unjust system is the truth of it. But the fact is they get a lot more money than we do in Wales, where our needs are not really taken into account. The fact that we've got an older, sicker population um, and poorer population is not taken into account in that Barnet formula. So Scotland gets more money, which is why it's more difficult for us to m match what they are uh, suggesting in Scotland. Thank you. Um, I want to move on to a few questions about um, career progression for nursing. There, there's a statement which is not really a question, which is um, from an anonymous uh, member who's saying there's little incentive for career, career progression in the higher bands for highly qualified and experienced staff. Senior staff may be leading services and working at advanced levels, and yet recent awards have only looked at the lower bands um, and particularly around career progression. Losing incremental awards, which happened in 2018, has meant that there are only small increases as people move from bands 8 to 8A to 8B. Um, and with tax and pension increases, many of the nurses with all this experience in these higher bands are actually worse off. And then there's a that's just a statement, but I think it's one that you may want to comment on. And then there's a question as well around progression. Um, and that says that very many band five nurses have been at the top of their band for many years. They've developed further skills um, and experience and, and bring bring that, of course, into their roles. How serious are you as the Welsh Government in looking at band progression for band five nurses? going forward in terms of what's in this pay offer. Thank you. Thanks very much. Well, um, I think I'm starting to understand a lot more now about pay progression and what how important it is to the RCN. And I was telling you, you've got very good negotiators. Well, Helen Wiley phoned me the night before um, there was a key decision on this just to push me a little bit further on this particular issue. Uh, and I was able to give a commitment there that we would be uh, looking to support um, a framework that would be presented by the summer in terms of supporting people to move from band five to band six. So that was a commitment that we're looking at. Now, I think from what I understand, we need to probably look at other areas as well, because the last thing we want to do is to lose very experienced people, particularly in specialist areas. So um, I know that the um, that there are head of nursing 
is very keen to to explore what more we can do in this in this area. We've got work uh, underway in terms of the nurse uh, preceptorship scheme. So I think that's uh, something else uh, that we are committed to delivering by April 2023. So, um, you know, this is an area I think that that I can give you an assurance that we will be working with you. Thank you. Um, a few more themes are coming in, so I'm going to going to move to some of those now. And um, a couple of questions on this this offer that our members are voting on at the moment, uh, asking is this a take it or leave it offer, and would you look at a multi year deal if members reject the current offer that we are asking them to vote on? Thanks. The key thing for me is for everybody to understand that April is the last time that we can give this offer, right? So that for me is the thing to remember. So um, look, I'm not saying that it would be impossible to look at a, a two year deal, but if we didn't, if, if we weren't able to land something that included two years before April, then the money that's on the table now would, would be gone. And, and that's what worries me. That's what really worries me more than anything else is that beyond April, I cannot give you an assurance that this money is going to be there. So, so, you know, that for me is the absolute clear thing is if you don't pick it up now, if you don't pick it up at least before the end of April, if we can't get an agreement on something before the end of April, and this is the deal that's on the table now, um, then, then I think, you know, I'm just really worried uh, that that you know people who could have had a considerable amount of additional money in their pocket may be, may not be getting it, and and I will not be able to find that money next year. So the key thing for me is to get an agreement by April. Uh, you know, I ideally this deal um, because we know the the length and breadth of it. We know where we stand and obviously we don't know what the budget next year looks like from the UK government and that will make a difference uh, knowing what what we're able to afford next year and we don't know that at the moment so so you know that's really difficult but it's it's basically just all about accounting and maths and things and you know that's <laughs> that's all very difficult but I, I think if we can uh, I would, you know, I would obviously encourage you to accept this deal that's in front of you. Thank you. Um, another thing which links quite neatly to that, uh, next question is, do you think that the pay review body process is now out of date? Um, and are you concerned that its main remit is set by the UK government? Uh, what's the point in Wales being involved? The questioner has written. OK, well, thanks very much. Do you know what? I gave evidence to these people last week and I was very, very clear that I didn't think that the current system uh, is working very well. I thought that they took the temperature on inflation way too early in the year. So they took the temperature in about uh, February, March. Um, and don't forget, you know, you didn't have the Ukraine war and the impact on inflation until a lot later. So, you know, inflation was considerably lower than it was later in the year. And that was something that I urged them to consider in the future is that they need to take the temperature on inflation at different points in the year because this system is clearly not working. I also made it clear to them that one of the offers that we made at the beginning of this process with trade unions was that, was that we would work with trade unions to make representations to the independent pay review process to see if they can change the way they work, because it's clear that uh, the confidence has gone out of the system. And um, I made that offer to them last week and they were very keen uh, to to hear from you and to work with you and to work with us to make sure because they they know that what what they've been recommending is is not actually um, satisfied the workers in the NHS. So for their own credibility, I think they understand that they're going to have to 
uh, change as well. So I think there was a, a genuine offer from them to to listen and to work with us and you in social partnership to make representations directly to them. I would suggest that we've got to be really, really careful about coming away from the, the um, a, a UK approach on this, or at least a, an England Wales approach. And the reason for that is if we get into regional pay, I think Wales could lose out. And that's the last thing I want. So um, that really worries me because obviously, you know, England is richer than Wales. They will, you know, they will target the money at the richest parts. And I'm not sure if we'll come out well from that. So I think we've got to think very, very carefully before we come out of that process. Uh, and a question literally just popped in, Minister, as you were saying that, what is, would you negotiate directly with nurses outside of the social partnership stroke Welsh um, partnership forum in the same way that the Prime Minister is doing with the RCN following the announcement this afternoon? I put you on the spot a little for that one. Huh. Look, I think we'll have to, uh, first of all, I'm really pleased at last the UK government sounds like they're actually going to go and sit at a table with the RCN and it's taken long enough. And I think it's really been helpful that we've been able to put something on the table to get them into that position. And that was, a, you know, a real, uh, it was really important for us that we were, you know, that we're different from the UK government. And I think that's definitely pushed them to a place where they understand now that they can't go on. So uh, what we, um, have committed to is if they put addition money that will result in additional money coming to Wales on the table that that with that also will will go to um, NHS workers so uh, obviously that I think could be good news for you as well although they may do what we've just done which is to cut effectively cut budgets from elsewhere so that obviously would put us in a different situation but listen I think at last they're listening um, and it's absolutely right that they listen because, you know, we are utterly dependent on you to 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 make sure that the NHS works in an effective way. Thank you. Um, next sort of block of questions. There's a few comments, there's a few questions go back to the sort of agency issue, but not only to agency, also to overtime and um, bank work and there's a few people sort of commenting about what will the Welsh Government do to incentivise nurses who want to do overtime in their own clinical areas or bank in their own clinical areas or bank when they're on holiday in a, and but could do something in another health board um, or incentives to get people to work those overtime and bank shifts rather than going on and using high cost um, agencies. So a couple of people making comments uh, around that, which I think would be quite a helpful discussion, because as you rightly say, in the uh, offer that's on the table, there, there has been quite a lot of talk about um, agency spending. Great, thanks very much. Look, I think this is an area where I think it's really, really important that we work with you and we listen to you and you tell us what will work. What is it that's going to uh, get people to to work on bank rather than on expensive agencies? What is it that that we can do to change the system to incentivize it? So we've got the workforce implementation plan that we've just announced recently. I think there's more work we can do in that space. I think there's more uh, we can do to try and encourage overtime if people are up for that. But, you know, obviously I'm also aware that that, that lots of nurses are on their knees already. Um, but, you know, if people are up for it, then what is it we can do to incentivise that? Um, so I think we've got a bit more work to do in this space, but that was why I'm really keen uh, to listen to the RCN so that you can guide us as to what will work in this space because um you know we're trying to listen to you on this more than you know as much as anything else um because you know we've got to be aware i i um spent the night in in Withy bush hospital a few weeks ago and you know it it stunned me quite how many people were um agency nurses there overnight 50 percent of the 
nurses overnight there. So, you know, you can't switch this off overnight. You know, most of them were coming down from London. Um, so it was, you know, it, it was really enlightening. Um, so what we need to do is just to incent to work out how we can incentivize you more. And, and that may mean a bit more rejigging, but we'll work with you on that. Uh, and a few people, as you've been talking, asking what your sort of timelines are to start turning that tanker uh, around. Mm. There are a number of the members are saying, you know, they've been saying for a long time, yeah. why can't we have overtime if we're if we're part time, but we're doing extra hours? Why can't we have overtime? Some things that have been said for many years. So they're just asking a supplementary really about what does the timeline look like that? What can we expect in terms of actually really making progress to ensure that people are incentivized to stay in the clinical areas that they work in? Well, well thanks very much. Um, We've got to make these savings next year. So that's the timeline. You know, the timeline is that we've got to get moving on this really, really quickly, because if I'm not able to make those savings, I'm going to have to find cuts from elsewhere in the health budget. And I really, really don't want to do that. So um, so the timeline is I want to get started on this as soon as we can. I mean, some of the work is, is already starting, but I think we're all a bit distracted at the moment with industrial action. And so you know, the sooner we can get on to the next chapter and to work out what we can do in this space, the better, because I think there are considerable savings we can make there. And I think also, we, you know, we I'm quite keen to speak to the UK because actually I think we could put a cap on, um, but we'd have to work with the UK to put a cap on. So, you know, that we just need to, to see how far we can go because they must be in the same situation as us. So. Um, but what we do know is we've been here before, and we've done it and we have managed to make savings, but obviously then COVID came in and, you know, we were we were all firefighting. So that's why we're absolutely keen now to get back to actually we, we managed to do this before and then we lost focus a bit. So we need to get back to the focus. Thank you. <clears throat> um, there's a. a question that's just come in which is uh, from an anonymous member and it says I, I know about the Barnett formula but I also voted for devolution and I'm still very passionate about it. When do we stop blaming Westminster for mm. our problems? I want the Welsh Government to look after Welsh people. Can't Why can't Wales set an example and be a role model for the rest of the UK on NHS pay? We've lost a lot of ground in the past and I think we should take a lead now. So that's quite a challenge to you, Minister. Yeah, thanks. Look, you know, I just wish we were a richer country. Uh, you know, because I'm a socialist and actually I'm quite, you know, I, I'm, I'm OK about actually levying more tax from richer people in order to help our, pay for our services. That's my political position. But I tried to explain earlier, the real problem we have is we just don't have enough rich people here in order to to, to be able to fulfil that. And that's why um, we're in this very difficult situation. But the very fact that we have um, actually prioritised this, you know, we've gone before England, I hope should tell you that actually we do cherish the NHS. We are trying to put it first. You know, we do work in social partnership here. We, you know, um, you know, I, d I don't think the head of the RCN in in England, is, you know, as, can pick up the phone directly to the House Minister there. But Helen can do that with me. You know, we have a much closer relationship. We have very regular meetings. Um, and I, I like to think we respect each other. Um, and part of that is about trying for us all to try and understand each other. You know what? You know, for us to put ourselves in each other's shoes a bit. And, you know, that's what I've been trying to do with you recently is just to say, right, OK, what is it that's that's really causing the frustration here? And I get that it's money fundamentally for nurses. I think that is absolutely true. Uh, I think for ambulance workers, some of it is just frustration of sitting around for hours and hours. It's kind of slightly different um, because the system needs to be changed a bit. So so there's lots of different um, areas and, you know, I think you know, one of the things that that industrial action does is to to make us really focus on your needs and your requirements 
and you know we're trying to respond and that's what we've done so um you know we don't want to blame westminster all the time but frankly uh if you look at the fact that over the past you know 10 15 years you've seen an increase in the amount of money going into the nhs in england of about 15 percent in germany it's 38 percent you know the bottom line is they're not putting enough money and if they put money into it in england we get we get a, a proportionate amount and then we can spend it how we want and the fact that we spend eight percent more in wales on the nhs than they do in england um should tell you something about um you know how we prioritize here in wales uh, and there are a couple of questions actually as well about the sort of relationship between the Welsh Government and uh, Westminster, which I think would be helpful if you wouldn't mind um, uh, uh, listening to a couple of these. So again, a couple of anonymous members asking, do you think the Welsh Government should negotiate more effectively with Westminster to secure further funding for the NHS? Um, and then another one saying something very, very similar. Is it not the job of the Welsh Government to negotiate more money from Westminster to fund NHS here in Wales? Well, you're obviously better negotiators than we are <laughs> the UK Government because I can tell you we've asked and we've begged and we've urged and, you know, they, I, I think part of the real frustration here, in particular for, for nurses, I guess, is that Actually, part of the deal was, you know, after the banking crisis, and let's not forget it was a banking crisis, they brought in austerity and they said, it's all right, we're going to sort you out at the end of this. And then, of course, what happened is COVID hit. And now they're saying, oh, we can't sort you out now because COVID's hit. And and that's that wasn't the deal. That wasn't, you know, that wasn't the deal that we agreed. So in terms of negotiating with Westminster, I have obviously written to Westminster government. I have urged them to increase the amount of money that goes to the NHS. Actually, what they've done is to cut the amount, for example, that we get for capital. So some of you will be working in hospitals where there are leaks in the roof. And actually, rather than being able to put more capital in, you know, they cut the amount we're getting. So, you know, that is really uh, frustrating for us, obviously. But some of this is about a political approach. And, you know, you saw what happened with Liz Trust. She came in, you know, we lost about 38 billion pounds just by those that month of chaos that we had. Don't forget how much they spent on PPE in England, how much they spent on testing in England. You know, we, we haven't got anything like that in Wales and we've been able to divert that money that we didn't spend on giving our mates contracts for PPE by using local authorities to do the testing rather than paying billions of pounds to companies. We've been able to keep that money and put it directly into the NHS. So we are running things differently. Um, and, and, you know, our approach, I'd like to think, is, is very different from, from the UK government. Thank you. Um, there's a question with regards to the situation with the teachers uh, and the questioner, again, it's an anonymous question, are saying the teachers in Wales, despite a Welsh pay review body process, have rejected their Welsh government offer. Why do you think the nurses should accept the offer on the table now? I tell you why, it's because if you don't pick it up, it won't be there for you. That's my concern. You know, April is the end date and the money goes in April. So if you don't pick it up, you know, it's just not going to be there. So, you know, it is a negotiating tactic. I get that. You say, come on, you can find a bit more money. I'm telling you, we can't. And, you know, that that is a, a real problem for us. And the money is there this year in the way it's going to be more difficult next year unless we get a different kind of budget approach from the UK government. And it may be they're about to change. And if they do, then that will put us in a different situation. But at this point in time, you know, we can't take risks like that without knowing, you know, what's in our budget for next year. At the moment, it's not clear. 
Um, there's a question asking if you could just clarify a little bit more about why it has to be spent in April. Ah. OK, so what happens is that in terms of finance, so this is kind of boring accountancy stuff the the. You have to the financial year in government goes from April to April in the same way you have to pay your taxes from April to April. OK, so um, it's in a financial year. Um, so part of what we're trying to do, uh, because we only year, go from year to year, you can't roll it over. OK, so that's part of the problem. Unlike your bank account and my bank account, where it just rolls over from April to April, you know, it doesn't happen in government. And that's our problem. And it's, you know, we don't make these rules up. It's the UK government makes the rules up. So that's a problem for us. And that's why there is a guillotine. There is an end of year, for God's sake, pick up this money, because if you don't, it'll be gone and we can't go back and fetch it. Thank you. That's helpful clarity. And um, a couple more questions coming in. I know we are getting close to six o'clock, but if, if we are able, Minister, we may just keep you for an extra few minutes to try and answer all the questions that have come in. Um, Pete, you, you keep saying that people in Wales are poor and that you can't pay nurses more. Um, but if Labour have been in charge of the economy for the last 25 years, I think that is referring to Wales, um, how will you improve the economy moving forward so that you can afford to pay us more? I think that's a fair question um, and you know that, that we do need to do better in terms of running the economy, making it work better. Part of what we need to do is to get people into work and at the moment obviously a lot of people are off work. Um, uh, there's a lot of, of people who've, who've stopped working uh, during the pandemic and you know that means that the kind of economic activity is not there. There's a lot of people on waiting lists in Wales who may not be able to work as a result of that. So, you know, I think these things are interlinked. And the one thing we learned during the pandemic is that health and the economy actually, you know, are absolutely interlinked. So it was really interesting watching, you know, I was on a lot of meetings with the UK government during the pandemic and they were so kind of let's open up, let's have the economy, let's make sure we just save the tourism industry or whatever. And actually, we were saying, no, hang on, can we just be a bit careful because we don't know what what new COVID variant might be coming in with that. And of course, what happened is that you just had wave after wave after wave, which meant that the economy slowed down or shut down. So the links are absolutely crucial. So I think that that's a fair criticism. I think we have got to do more in relation to driving the economy in Wales. Some of that is about you know improving education. Some of that is about in, um, improving aspiration, you know, getting people, you know, to 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 want to do better, to want to do more, um, and uh, you know what I I'm absolutely hearing from the RCN is actually you've got a lot of ambitious people uh, who want to go up the ranks, and we've got to make it easier for them to do that. Thank you. Um, we're having a little flurry of last minute questions coming in. Um, so there's one here about how will the Welsh Government tackle the challenges in social and primary care to reduce the burden on secondary care whilst also trying to support nurses and care staff out in the community? How does the Welsh Government intend to train and retain staff in these areas to deliver care closer to home and reduce some health inequalities? That's quite a question, Minister. Mm. But I, I think it's a fair one. It is, and I, I spend a lot of my time on this, as you can imagine, because it's been absolutely clear to me that a, a real problem here has been the, the issue of delayed transfers of care and, uh, you know, our inability to get people out of hospital once they've been treated. Um, and so we do need to refocus our care onto the community to prevent people from coming into hospital in the first place. And, you know, this is really coming uh, coming home to me recently because I've been looking at the stats in terms of what what comes next in terms of the aging population. And, you know, if you think it's bad now, it's going to get it's going to get more difficult as the aging population um, uh, are 
are, are, are you know will become more demanding in a sense because because um, they they're getting older. There are more of them. The baby boomers are just coming through. All of that's going to put additional pressure. So my number one priority uh, for the uh, health boards this year has been that we need to focus on developing a uh, a comprehensive integrated community care offer in the community. So we do need more uh, resources actually from secondary care to go into our communities, because uh, if we don't do that, we're not going to break this this very difficult situation that we're in. Um, the, the link with social care is absolutely crucial. Uh, and obviously there has been an issue in terms of recruiting people to uh, the care sector. We lost about 2000 people from the care sector when Brexit happened. Uh, so that was problematic for us and we're finding it hard to uh, replace them, uh, which is why we have um, made sure that when our, our priorities in the budget last year was to make sure we pay them the real living wage, because if we don't do that, you know, we're going to lose even more people from what is a really important sector. Um, so uh, for me, fixing that is as important as, you know, getting new people back to work if we can, because, um, you know, we cannot, we cannot continue as we are now. So, you know, I'm incredibly grateful for the fact that you've suspended your action. Um, obviously, I'm very, very keen uh, to see that you, you pick up that offer. So I've got one last question for you, Minister, and, and this has come through from a few members in slightly different forms. But in essence, what they're asking is if following the uh, announcement this evening that England are in talks with the RCN around England, mm -hmm. if that's to result in an, in an improved offer, will you will you commit to ensuring that Wales will always be as good, if not better, than England in terms of um, both pay and terms and conditions? Well, I can't commit for the long term because I probably won't be health minister forever. But what I can tell you is that on my watch, uh, I, I can give that commitment. So certainly for, for, for this year, um, you know, that commitment is there. We've already gone over and above what they're offering. And we've also said if they get more money and put more money on the table from elsewhere and we get uh, uh, an additional amount of money, then you will, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll be passing that on as well. So uh, we've made that clear. I think that's a really good and generous offer. Um, but obviously we're, we're keen to do that um, and to, to make sure uh, that you know that people understand that we are committed to the NHS in Wales. That actually, you know, this is the birthplace of the name Bevan, and uh, I think we should all be really proud of it. It's seventy fifth anniversary this year, and um, you know, I think we're we're gonna we're gonna have to think carefully about what the future looks like. Um, and you know, that's a conversation I think we need to have with you as well about what does need to change to make it really genuinely sustainable for the long term. And obviously, respecting people who work in the NHS is absolutely key to that. And I hope you've seen that, that the numbers of people we've got training it for the NHS, the number of nurses we've got in training is significantly higher than what you've seen before. Um, so, so we are trying our very best. We're obviously trying to recruit people from abroad as well. But the key for us is, is growing our own. Uh, and we want to work with you to, to make sure that not only do we grow our own, but we keep you. You know, you are you are, you know, highly trained individuals. And the last thing we want to do is to train you up and see you leave. So um, we understand that pay is a really key part of that. Thank you. Uh, so just leaves me really to make a few concluding remarks uh, and to thank um, Eleni Morgan, the Minister in Wales for Health and Social Services for coming along and taking your question. So a big Diokonval Rian uh, for doing that. You have put over 
40 questions to her. I've themed some of them into blocks, but we've had at least 10 or 12 different themes that the minister has, has answered. And this really was this evening an opportunity for you, the members, to put your questions to the minister. And um, she she's taken the time to, to answer that. And I deliberately didn't bring in other commentators on her answers because I wanted to get through as many of your questions as we possibly could. Um, the ministers agreed that we've recorded this and we will be using the recording to share with members who weren't able to be here this evening. Um, so thank you very much indeed for coming along and taking those questions and a big thank you as well to Jackie and Nikki who uh, started off this evening's webinar with some information for you to have at your fingertips. I want to remind members that the member vote on this additional pay offer from the Welsh Government for 22-23 is still open and it stays open until nine o'clock next Monday morning, 9 a.m. You can vote either through the email that you've been sent or you can log on to the RCN website in the My RCN. You can change your minds as many times as you wish to, but the last vote that you count, that you cast, I beg your pardon, will be the one that we count when the vote closes. Please also encourage your colleagues to take the time to read the information on the website about the deal and to cast their votes. I hope that you all have a very pleasant evening and again thank you the members for coming along to this. Please share the recording when we publish it so that your colleagues can catch up on the details. So Diochen Valrian for coming along this evening uh, and Nostar. Thank you.